It's good to have you with us today. I'm Merck Shane, pastor here at Keoki Chapel, and welcome one and all. Today we will worship in love and in peace. So let us begin with our call to worship. Hear the good news. Through Jesus, we are saved and able to begin again. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to live the law of love. We need only trust and follow God. Let us pray. God of all seasons, help us to refocus our attention on you and the ways in which you build up your beloved community. Overturn our lives and reorder them so that we may be in sync with you. In Christ we pray. Amen. For our children's sermon today, I ask the question, um, what do you think Jesus is like? How would you picture him? Is he tall or short? Is he uh, lean or stocky? Is he strong, quiet, polite, energetic? How do you perceive, how would you picture Jesus? Well, Jesus was many things. He was a very kind man. Um, he helped those who were sick and ill. He cared about children. And so we see Jesus as being like a shepherd that would take care of the little lambs, that he would be sympathetic and feeling, and sometimes emotional as he dealt with those around him. Well, today's story is slightly different in terms of Jesus showing his emotion. Jesus showed his anger. He upset a, a table and was concerned because the people in the temple were not following God's law. They were doing business. Just like if you saw somebody trying to sell things out of the sanctuary at church, that's what was going on for Jesus. And he was quite upset about that. And so he overturned the table and got out a whip and cracked it just to show them that he had emotions and that he was not happy with their behavior. And so it was somewhat of a scary sight to see Jesus in this manner. And so people ran in all different directions because they were afraid. Jesus had turned over the table and it reminded the people that the temple was a house of prayer and that it was God's house for our worship. And so as we remember Jesus, as we remember that he was a strong man that had a lot of emotions, but this time he happened to show his emotions more than any other time that we reflect on that something was wrong and he saw what was going on and had to speak out about it and so let us pray loving God bless our children help them in their growth and development help them to see the loving and caring Jesus that we see on a regular basis Help us not to be so much afraid of him, but know that he is all about doing God's will, as we should be as well. Give us strength, give us guidance, so that we make good decisions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer, We want to make sure that we remember all those that are 
near and dear to us, those that have been in the hospital and hopefully in recovery, uh, for all those that are essential workers, uh, those that truly care about us and are trying to help us at every turn. And so we give thanks for their lives. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, come to us this day. Open our minds and our hearts so that we might hear what you have in store for us. If our front door is locked, kick it open. If we are cold or aloof, set us on fire. If our preacher goes too long, shut him up. If we talk about everything except what is important, force us to confront the truth. If we become so concerned about the mere survival of our church at the expense of the mission of our church, take it from us and tear it down. If we hunker down behind our sacred walls, push down the walls and drive us out into the world where you are Lord of all. You are Lord of all, including the church. Help us never to forget that truth, even when it hurts. Creator of the universe, we praise your name for the coming and going of each season and the ebb and flow of each tide. In love, we ask your healing hands to be with those who are in need of our family, in our community, and in our world. Help us to reach out in love to those in need. Help us to live your law of love in every part of our life. Oh God, you have only to listen to the news to know that we humans have a hard time living together. We have forgotten the basic Ten Commandments that begin to teach us what love looks like. We have made idols out of people and things in our lives. We are not always honored by honoring our parents. And we have coveted and wished we had what our neighbors had and been more like them than who you have made us to be. Forgive us. Help us to begin again to reach out in love to you, to others, and to ourselves. Oh God, we ask for your guidance in our decision making. We pray for safe journeys as we go through our lives. Give strength to those in need and help us in all that we do. We pray in your Son Jesus' name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
We give thanks for all of you that have contributed, made contributions to our uh, church. And so we give thanks and ask for your continued support so that we can carry on the missions of the church. And so in giving thanks, let us pray. Gracious God, you have given us everything we need for a good life lived in relationship with you and neighbor. We commit ourselves anew to living as you command. Guide, protect, and help us in living out our intention and receive and use this offering as a statement of our sincerity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is John 2, verses 13 through 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip of cord and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miracul miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you were going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your holy scriptures, whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with the ready willingness to hear its truths Heed its calling and enact its lessons. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises, it rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the earth, to the heart. 
commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than the honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful, willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. When you think of order and laws, biblically, where do you turn? What comes to mind as you reflect on that assignment? Well, naturally, you may go to Exodus and look at the Ten Commandments, which I mentioned in my prayer. Or you may look in other parts of the Bible as it relates to laws and order. This psalm looks at three specific things. It looks at God's revelation in creation. God's revelation in the law and the response of the people of faith. God's revelation of creation, you notice that it talked about the sun and the night. That is enough for people to know that God exists. The fact that we see the sun rise and set and night fall, that 24 hour cycle, day after day, you know that God exists because God created it. God's laws, we know from numerous different examples and our lessons about how we need to love others how we need to love God, and how we need to love ourselves. And then we look at the people's response of faith. How do people behave? How do they act around one another? How are they keeping these laws intact? How are they creating order within our lives so that we can all exist together? You see, observance of the law is joy. It's not a burden. Oh yeah, many times we see laws and rules and regulations and it overcomes us. It encompasses us to the point where we feel pulled down. We feel burdened. But God's laws are such that there should be joyful. And as we should be excited knowing that God has laid out this plan for us to care for one another, for us to love and show that love on a regular basis, and that should produce great joy in our lives. When we don't follow the rules, when we don't follow the order, we get into situations like this story in John where Jesus reacts with anger because of what's going on in the temple, in the temple's courts. 
Because what's really happening here in this story? Well, in the marketplace, they are now using the temple area, trying to sell approved sacrificial animals. Oh yeah, people brought animals to sacrifice, typically uh, cattle and sheep and a dove. If they didn't have that, then they had to obtain that. Many times they went to the marketplace to purchase them so that they had something to sacrifice instead of it being their own. No, well, that was not appropriate. Also in the marketplace, they were exchanging currency, and so people had to have the right funds in order to make their purchases. Not uncommon in our lives today. How people exchange currency, you've got to have the right thing. And so naturally, as Jesus approached this and saw how they were dealing with one another and how they were using the temple as a place of business, he got upset. Broke out the whip and overturned the table with coins on them. Oh yeah, I could easily do that. But then I'd have to pick it all up. But Jesus showed his anger. Jesus showed that he had emotions and how important this was in terms of the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of people, of reacting to what he saw. Recognize how many times we react to the things that we see. Are people trying to sell things in our sanctuary? Oh yeah, we have things that we give announcements about sales that are going on within our, uh, our church folk and our community. But we're not trying to sell items in the midst of worship. I'm not asking you to give just to pad my pocket. I'm not asking you to do something beyond the norm or what's in order. Something that's outside of the law. Jesus is trying to help them understand that we need to be to stand up against abusive forces. Against folks that aren't trying to do the right thing to help folks make changes that will hopefully set us all free. When you don't speak up about abuses that you see, whether it be physical or emotional or even spiritual, you are not following God's law and order. When you see discrimination and you don't say anything. You're not following God's orders and law. And so we need to make sure that when we see injustice, we speak out. We recognize what God truly wants and not what is happening to our fellow humans here on earth. Not only our humans, but also all of God's creation. The animals, the property, our environment. God wants us to protect our existence here on earth so that others might come and follow after us. Generation to generation. And so it's important for us 
to follow God's teaching, to love our atmosphere, to love our animals, to love each other with love and respect. You see, we need to make sure we show our faith. That it's not simply, simply a, a statement, but that we act in appropriate manners. God will stand by us if we do the right thing. Are you willing to do and say the right thing to show your love for God? Let us pray. God of forgiveness, we have not been faithful in keeping you at the center of our lives. We blame our schedules, our situations, and our lack of resources. We are quick to place blame on others rather than on ourselves as we slowly push you off to the side. Forgive us as we turn back to you and reorder our lives to put you first. Remind us and encourage us of your love and grace so that we can uphold our promises to be your faithful people. In Christ we pray. Amen. Go forth. Have a good week. Be at peace with those around you. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. And take the gifts that God has given you and use them appropriately to show God's love. Amen. I bid you peace, be safe, and take care of one another.